Hello everyone myself Dr Parth Goswami I am the consultant pathologist and today I am going to teach you about glomerular disease classification and the pathological response of glomerulus to a injury In my previous lecture I have talked regarding the anatomy and histology of kidney so if you have not seen that video first then check my playlist and see that video because uh, you know by understanding the anatomy and histology only you can proceed further in the kidney all right so friends uh, you should know that kidney pathology is morphologically and anatomically divided into four category the kidney pathology is divided into four category according to the morphology and the anatomy of kidney the first category is glomerular diseases of kidney that include nephritic syndrome and the nephrotic syndrome second category include tubulo interstitial disease like that of tubulo interstitial nephritis pyelonephritis acute tubular necrosis like that of disease third category is diseases of blood vessel which include thrombotic microangiopathy and the nephrosclerosis mainly and the vasculitis right so diseases of blood vessel is third category involving the kidney and the fourth category is tumors of kidney so there is a four category of kidney pathology according to the morphology and anatomy all right today we are going to discuss about the overview of glomerular disease i will give you a overview of glomerular disease so let's begin with glomerular disease the glomerular disease is classified in a two category primary and secondary primary glomerulopathy or primary glomerulonephritis means only kidney is involved there is a no other system involvement and usually it is without inflammatory cell understand primary glomerulopathy means primary kidney involvement there is a no involvement of other system there is no any systemic disease while secondary glomerular disease secondary glomerulonephritis or nephrotic syndrome means here the glomerulus involve secondary to certain systemic diseases understand you in the body the patient is having the systemic disease like that of diabetes right sle hiv amyloidosis etc hypertension and the kidneys involve secondary the glomerulus is involved secondary to these systemic diseases that's why it is known by the name secondary glomerular disease so this is the two basic category of glomerular disease primary and secondary so which are the certain diseases of primary glomerulopathy where only kidney is involved understand no other system is involved there is no other systemic disease so the examples include two category nephritic syndrome and nephrotic syndrome i will teach you nephritic and nephrotic syndrome in the detail in my subsequent lecture but this is just the overview right these two category are the primary glomerulopathy the nephritic syndrome the examples of nephritic syndromes is acute proliferative glomerulonephritis that is particularly post streptococcal glomerulonephritis then rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis which is also known by the name crescentic glomerulonephritis understand these two are the nephritic syndrome while the rest of the diseases are the example of nephrotic syndrome that is a membranous nephropathy minimal chain disease focal segmental glomerulosclerosis membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis dense deposit disease and the iga nephropathy i will explain all this nephritic and nephrotic syndrome in the detail in my subsequent lecture these all are the primary glomerulopathy right here the systemic disease is not present the second category is secondary glomerular disease where the kidney involvement glomerular involvement is secondary to certain systemic diseases the examples of systemic diseases include systemic lupus erythematosus it is autoimmune disease then diabetes mellitus in which uh, glomerulus involved in the form of sclerosis amyloidosis good pasture syndrome which is example of uh, you know anti gbm nephritic syndrome then microscopic polyarthritis granulomatosis with polyangiitis and hanos colin purpura these all are the example of vasculitis right so these are the systemic diseases where kidney involve secondary right 
here the multi organ involvement is present all right the examples of third category hereditary disorder of glomerular disease include alport syndrome thin basement membrane nephropathy and the fabry disease all right now i will teach you so this is the overview of glomerular disease right now i will teach you the pathological response of glomerulus to injury i i i want to say that which are the histological changes following the glomerular injury so let's see the morphology of glomerulus to injury in the detail whenever the glomerulus injured which are the pathological response which are the histological changes so that we will discuss so basically there are three form of commonly observed histopathological changes when glomerulus injured one is hypercellularity second one is gbm thickening and third category is hyalinosis and sclerosis so first of all let's begin with hypercellularity the name itself suggest means increase cellularity and if you remember that the cellularity is increase leukocyte infiltration macrophage infiltration like that of inflammatory infiltrate mainly seen whenever there is a inflammation in the body understand so here the hypercellularity inflammation mainly seen in the category of inflammation of glomerulus which is known by the name nephritic syndrome so it is it is mainly seen in post streptococcal glomerulonephritis and rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis it is mainly seen in nephritic syndrome understand because of inflammation so it is mainly seen in proliferative glomerulonephritis and here the hypercellularity is in the form of cellular proliferation or leukocytic infiltration leukocytic infiltration is because of inflammation understand if it is acute inflammation then there is a presence of neutrophil but suppose if it it is converted into chronic kidney disease chronic inflammation then there could be presence of monocyte or lymphocyte like that of chronic inflammatory cell and the cellular proliferation is in the form of proliferation of visceral epithelial cell parietal epithelial cell mesangial cells and endothelial cell right so cellular and leukocytic proliferation is seen in proliferative glomerulonephritis where you have the hypercellular glomerulus the severe degree of glomerular injury will injury will reflect as a crescent formation it is a severe form of kidney injury if not treated such type of injury if not treated then it can be lethal so what do we mean by crescent formation here you have the abundant leukocytic infiltration you have the severe inflammation in the body in the glomerulus you have the severe leukocytic infiltration and additionally you will have the patient will have the proliferated parietal epithelial cell which line the bowel and space understand and because of endothelial injury because of capillary injury in the glomerulus there will be leakage of plasma protein and fibrin from the blood into the glomerulus so it will get deposited so in the crescent there is a presence of leukocytic infiltration proliferated parietal epithelial cell and fibrin these three together will form a meshwork in the glomerulus which is known by the name crescent formation and which indicate a very poor prognosis right and it is mainly seen in rapidly progressive glomerulonephritis see this is the crescent formation here you can see that this is the visceral epithelial cell podocyte right this is the visceral epithelial cell outer which there is a presence of bowel space and these are the parietal epithelial cell these are the parietal epithelial cell so in the crescent formation there is a proliferation of this parietal epithelial cell additionally there is a deposition of fibrin this all are the fibrins right there is a presence of fibrin and there is a presence of leukocytic infiltrate together which they will form a crescent formation all right this is the example of post streptococcal glomerulonephritis this is a hypercellular glomerulus you can see that there is a presence of abundant neutrophil this this trilobe cell the cell with three nucleus are the neutrophils right this all are the neutrophils so you can see a proliferated acute inflammatory cell this mononucleated cells are this all cells are proliferated mesangial cells right 
and additionally you can see a proliferation of endothelial cell as well so these are the endothelial cell right this is the acute inflammatory cell right and this one is the mesangial cell so you can see a neutrophil mesangial cell and proliferated endothelial cell in the proliferative glomerulonephritis understand the endothelial cell proliferation acute inflammation and proliferated mesangial cell is seen in hypercellular glomerulus particularly post hypococcal glomerulonephritis all right this is the crescent formation you can see again this is the diagram of crescent formation you can see a hypercellular glomerulus where you have the abundant neutrophilic infiltration and you have the adhesion between the tuft and capsule because of fibrin and these all are the proliferated parietal epithelial cell this is the schematic diagram but histopathologically it looks like this so this is the crescent formation understand these uh, two beautiful figures are given in the pathological basis of Robin's book and this is in the Dr. Harsh Mohan textbook of pathology book. These two are the very beautiful diagrams showing a crescent formation. All right. The second change to the glomerulus to an injury. Second change in the glomerulus to injury is basement membrane thickening. That can be in the form of three. Three form. Basement membrane thickening, right? It can present in three form. The one is electron dense material deposition by immune complex that that could be on the pre, that could be on the endothelial or epithelial side of gbm here additionally apart from immuno complex immune complex fibrin amyloid cryoglobulin and abnormal fibrillary protein may also deposit in the gbm and that's why there is a glomerular basement membrane thickening the second change is that particularly seen in diabetic glomerulus sclerosis where you have the increased synthesis of protein in the GBM and so there is a GBM thickening right third change is lamina denser duplication that is seen in membrane of proliferative glomerulonephritis so there could be a three cause of glomerular basement membrane thickening all right the last observable morphological histological change in the glomerulus to injury is hyalinosis and sclerosis why hyalinos is seen so the hyalinos means homogeneous eosinophilic hyaline material deposition in the glomerulus and that is only because of damage to endothelial cell and so there is a leakage of plasma protein from blood circulation into the glomerulus it is due to endothelial or capillary injury as we have discussed so there will be leakage of plasma protein and the fibrin from blood circulation into the glomerulus and whenever hyalinos is present usually it indicate end stage result of granular glomerular damage sclerosis it is a extracellular collagenous matrix deposition understand and the deposition could be in the mesangium or capillary deposition right and it is particularly seen in diabetic glomerulosclerosis so these three are the histological changes seen in the glomerulus to injury hypercellularity gbm thickening hyalinosis and sclerosis understand okay now we will proceed further with certain terminology now certain histological changes classification according to the distribution of involvement i want to say that according to distribution of involvement of glomerulus there is a certain classification there is a certain terminology so the first terminology is diffuse glomerulonephritis means the all glomerulus of kidney is involved which is known by the name diffuse glomerulopathy second one is global means individual glomerulus is involved fully the whole glomerulus individual is involved which is known by the name global suppose if some of the glomeruli of kidney is involved then it is known by the name focal glomerulopathy Suppose the part of glomerulus is involved, only part of glomerulus is involved, then it is known by the name segmental glomerulopathy. While the capillary or mesangial means there is a presence of capillary or mesangial deposit. So suppose I am writing one category of nephrotic syndrome is focal segmental glomerulosclerosis. So what do we mean by FSCS? Means focal means only some glomerulus of kidney is involved. And segmental means only part of glomerulus is involved. But suppose I am telling you a diffuse global glomerulonephritis means 
the all glomerulus is involved and global means the whole individual glomerulus is also involved so that is known by the name diffuse global glomerulopathy all right so friends this is all about the glomerular disease classification and the pathological response of glomerulus to injury in our next next lecture we will start with pathogenesis of glomerular injury and the nephritic syndrome thank you very much and see you soon in the next video till then take care and bye bye